thanks for watching. One of the most important things you've got to consider is what you're going to be wearing. Um, and so what I've done is I've put aside some of my best clothing that I've found. Um, I've been to REI many times over this and tried just about everything and I'm really happy with the setup that I have. So I'd like to pull these aside as some of the best of the best. Um, for my base layer I go with Capilene 3. It's very compressible, very lightweight, it has a great layer of warmth. For their tops I found the zip top to be well worth the extra 10 bucks. It has um, lets you regulate because sometimes you overheat when you're walking a lot. For my good weather clothing, for my main primary, um, both of these are UPF 50, which is very important. They block 97 or more percent of all the UV radiation. Very important if you're going to be outside, if you're in any sort of desert situation, if you're just outside for long periods of times, even in the snow. So for my shirt, this is a real surprise winner. It's very affordable. This is the REI Sahara Tech shirt. And um, again, UPF 50, vented on the sides, vented in the back. It's lightweight, it's 100% nylon, and um, it's only about 35 bucks. I've been really, really happy with that. A little bit more expensive is the uh, Mountain Hardware pants. This is Mountain Hardware's Canyon Cloth, which is their most durable and advanced nylon. Uh, they come in a lot of uh, shorter inseams, which I need. I'm only 5'8". They also have the drawstring, elastic drawstrings at the base, so you can pull them up over your knees and cinch them down as you're going through rivers and whatnot. When they do get wet, they dry very fast. They breathe excellently, and I've been really happy with them, too. For warmth, I've gone with the basic North Face Denali fleece, probably one of the most popular North Face jackets out there. Any fleece will do, as long as it is Polar Tech fleece. Uh, this is a Polar Tech 300 weight. If you're living anywhere in the central or southern states, you probably don't need anything quite this heavy. Um, this will keep me warm, you know, right on down 22, 23 below zero. And I've been very happy with that. I got on sale at REI as well. As for extreme weather, the shell that I wear, um, I use on a daily basis. I work outside, so they're a little tattered. But for my pants, I use Arcteryx Beta AR pants. Um, very happy with them. Now this is Gore-Tex Pro Shell 3L, which is the most durable and advanced Gore-Tex they make. In addition to that, all waterproof zippers all the way up, built-in gaiters, which are also 100% waterproof and the Kepertec instep so that you're not tearing them up. I've tried event, clo event clothing, I've tried Marmot Preset. Um, I always come back to Gore-Tex. I do believe it's the most breathable when you get the Pro Shell, when you get the high end. Uh, in addition to being the most breathable, it's not as plastic and their durable water repellents on the surface are very good. Uh, my problem with the event was when you're walking in the bushes and constantly brushing against the brambles, the DWR wears off very quickly. And then they don't breathe and you end up just as wet inside as you are out. So, these are probably the most expensive item I have. These pants will set you back about $350. Um, if you want to get, they have others even higher than this going up $425 or $500. And you have to make your own budget as to what you can really afford. Um, but in the end, I think that the Pro Shell is worth it in the pants. Now for the jacket, I went a little bit lighter. This is Gore-Tex Pack Light. This is a two-layer Gore-Tex, much lighter weight. Um, the inside is hydrophobic as well as oleophobic. So your body oils aren't going to hurt it, so you can wear it just that as a windshell as you need. In addition, you know, waterproof pit zips, full length vents in here, um, and the pockets are all laminated Gore-Tex inside too, so you're not going to get anything wet, putting wet stuff in your pockets. Um, I've been very happy with both of these. And I think that while you do need the heavier layer on the base, because that's where you're going to be doing the majority of your abrasion, um, going with the lighter weight there really saves you ounces add up a lot real fast. Uh, socks and shoes is such a personal choice, but I did want to just pull these aside to something I've been really happy with. Um, these warmers, these are neoprene socks, and I don't wear waterproof shoes, so these keep you warm while wet, and uh, that's been huge. In addition to that, depending on the extreme of where you're going to be going, these are Rocky socks, and these are Gore-Tex socks. Um, they're basically the same Gore-Tex that they use in gloves. They don't have a lot of stretch, and they're not the most comfortable but they will keep you dry. You know, and depending how cold it gets, you may really need that. The last thing to discuss is one of the most personal choices, and it's having the best pack. As far as the pack, you've got to just choose it based on your own fit. Now, this pack I got, um, as far as Osprey packs in general, they're considered top end. This one here is part of the newest Osprey line, and they've got the Bioform foam. So what they'll do is they'll actually heat it up in an oven and then wrap it around you 
and it'll form to your body so that every part of it uh, fits as best as it can. This is the Osprey 85, which is either one of or their most highest capacity pack 85 liters. Uh, the thing I like most about it is how modular it is. You can leave it at your tent, take this with you when you're just going hunting, trying to get a squirrel or something. Um, you can access top and bottom. And if you take a look at the detailings on it, the zippers are enormous. They're not going to break for anything. They're guaranteed for life. Um, if anything does break, they take care of them. And uh, that just really stands to how, um, how durable they have been. The pack itself is rather lightweight. You'll notice it's not as padded as some of the other ones. Um, but the padding that they do have, it is memory form, and it's formed to your body. The back is air escape, uh, which has made a difference, I think, compared to the older ones and compared to the Kelties. It does a very good job at least getting some of that airflow through. It's very easy to overheat when you've got a big pack on. So this is what I found out of everything I've tried to be what I consider the best of the best, and this is what I'm going to be carrying. So thanks for watching.